Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews, and convention panels. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the 5th Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Hey guys, Jim here with Creative Playing Podcast. And Kelly. And Kelly. We are here for RPG A Day 2024. And to make this a notable 2024, we've got a month of prompts for us to vlog, blog, and talk about for the RPGs that we know and love. And Maybe some new RPGs and some other things and, you know, good stuff. Yep. So yep. for today, Kelly, what is the topic? Uh, the topic for today is notable non-player character. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> now, uh, you mentioned one in the previous episode, Mandawin. Um, and yeah, he's he's quite the character, but I am going to call out two of them. Well, technically one or one of the two is actually a, a group. <laughs> so the the ones that I'm gonna mention are Slug, Slug. the Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> So when we did the first time when we did the uh, uh, the Mines of Fendelver, and you 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 go up against goblins at one point. Mm-hmm. So instead of killing this one goblin, he was the last one remaining. Our uh, we, she was a fight. No, she was was she a paladin? Talk, you know, uh, she was a fighter. If you're talking she about the Lady yeah. Del Corlin. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we decided to keep the goblin alive and uh, then we kind of made him a retainer and Lady Corlin gave him a, a bath and <laughs> cleaned him up <laughs> and made him wear velvet and, and he, w- he was not too happy about it but secretly he was <laughs> and then he just more made it grumpy yeah, huh? More importantly, towards the end of the se- season, Blood learned that there's a magic carpet that has coins every morning. Exactly. <laughs> because she used to do the old servant's test of leaving a coin under the carpet, and unfortunately, Splug thought it was a magic carpet that left coins every morning. <laughs> but we liked Splug so much. <laughs> it was it was okay. And then we got another goblin. Oh god, what was the other goblin's name? I can't remember later on. And that one didn't even pretend not to like it. They were all in. And it's because we were nice to them for the moment. You know uh-huh. they, they didn't have a hobgoblin beating them up and and kicking them and just treating them horribly. We were nice. We gave food. We gave you, you so, actually fed them and protected them, you know. Mm-hmm. So, Splug, Splug was was an adorable character, and the voice he did just made it that much cuter. Um, the next one that I was going to mention is also a similar type of thing, is my sprites. <laughs> no, no, not, not, not the sprites, no! I know. Oh my God, I love the sprites. And so, uh, in a previous uh, 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 day, I forget which day it was. I mentioned my uh, sign of Loki, and mm-hmm. she had to go into a vault and steal something. 
which she did. But what I didn't mention was that she opened it. <laughs> inside was a little box. And when I opened the little box, these sprites, these like little glowy balls of light almost, um, popped out. And of course, they had the cutest voice voiced by you. I just love them. And what a sweet tooth that they had. And <laughs> oh my God. Okay, hold it. I remember that if this has been a while, I'll have to look it up. But Manny, Mo, Jack, and there was one more. What was their name? <laughs> You need to go over to Scion, Rag and Rock and Roll, a Scion hero with a God story, and re-listen to that session. Exactly. <laughs> um, but they were adorable, and you did the Took voice. I did so... the, the, the James Marsters Took voice from the audiobooks Dresden Files. Yes. The Valor, that's the first, the fifth, or the, you have your own sprite scrub. I know, and I, I just love that much i can't help it it's so adorable and every time it would just be <laughs> just and, love those little guys and the best thing was in the backstory for the game you had the box the wooden box covered in runes that had the rhine gold ring which mm -hmm. was following the whole story based on the 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 classic you know vetas and the rhine maiden that the bad guys put the sprites in the box basically as an alarm system because if any asshole stole the box and opened it, you'd have four sprites running around causing mayhem. Instead, yeah. Loki's <laughs> daughter opens the box and she bonds with the, the, the little chaotic minions. You'd be surprised perfect. what candy can accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> Because here the plan was, okay, if you do open the box, you have these sprites with paralyzing weapons. They'll probably take, you know, you out or the wolves out and, and give the opening for whoever's going to get the box to see what interesting things happen. Because, mm -hmm. yes, as a GM, you should be basically your, your player's best friend and their enemy at the same time wanting interesting <laughs> things to happen. And all good NPCs should be that way. You should never be afraid to ad lib an NPC. And they become part of the story, and some of them are can be so endearing. Some of them can be so infuriating, <laughs> but they do, especially if they're fleshed out. Mm -hmm. um, they ha they lend a much more reality uh, and depth, I think, to an adventure. So, and of course, you were just the cutest as both, and I loved the voices, so thank you, and, thank you, thank you. And as a GM, if you want your players to roleplay, you got to roleplay too. So if you roleplay and do silly hand gestures, or get facial tics going, you know, or do cool voices, that will help your players roleplay too, because they basically rift off of yours. And I'll throw it out there, if you want memorable NPCs, base your NPCs off a character in a movie or a TV show, and if your characters, your players can ever guess the character, you, you're doing it right. Because you're basically putting that inflection and that attitude, like, do any Robert De Niro character, because if, you know, he's, he's one of the great ones, you know. Pesci's another one, you know, of, of their characters, even though their voice might be the same, the character's persona is different, mm -hmm. you know, you know, so, so that way, if you ever, if really want to get into it, you know, you just get into a character and write on your character sheet who the actor and the character is and what movie on the NPC sheet to help remind yourself getting into it, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that's one way that helps making NPC running easier, especially when you have, like, five or six campaigns going on and a list of them. You can totally put in there the actor, the character, and the movie, so that way at a glance, boom, you know what gestures to do, what hand signals to do. Like, that's one thing that does kill me when you're playing on the VTTs. The virtual tabletops, you you have to describe to the players what you're doing because you just realized I did this whole gesture thing and the players aren't getting it because I'm acting at the computer with the headphones on for myself. Mm -hmm. 
So so make sure, you know, especially if you're doing the virtual tabletop and your players can't see you, you're telling them the facial pics. Because a lot of times, if you're that poor GM that's playing five NPCs at the table all at once in conversation and you're embracing your multiple personality issues and going schizophrenic at the table, by having different gestures and tics and hand language, you're actually helping your, your players know you're switching channels. Mm -hmm. another, another good tip, and I don't do this often enough, is to have the NPC's names on a cue card or an index card, and you can hold it up during confusing conversations so they know that you're playing the two puppet heads talking to each other. But I always say try to try to like, you know, female NPCs soften your voice, breathe a little more, males be a little more gruff and tumble and, and err, you know, so that way it comes across. And, you know, if you're if you're something, you know, special about the character you can tag into, that will really help. Like Mem Darwin always had a slight Irish hint to his accent, you know. And Splug is really a goblin taken from an old D and D module, but just the name and the fact that he likes the player group because they give him gold coins. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> basically, you make Splug is this really excited. What if a goblin was raised like a halfling, you know, and got to <laughs> embrace the good stuff like good booze instead of rotten swill? When the hobgoblins only give you grog, you've been given wine by the nice noble lady. Maybe mm. it's worth hanging around them. They pay better. They feed you. <laughs> and you can always murder them later. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> and like... Dog, I don't want to have to kill you. <laughs> yeah. And for my pick... For NPC, it's actually kind of funny because we ended up picking the same campaign, technically. Oh. But my favorite NPC, and uh, in other RPGs, I will totally steal the persona and the character and the likeliness, but it's Loki. Loki. The god of mischief, or maybe just an asshole. Because depending on how you play him, he can just be this hee 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 imp of a mischievous character. Or he can be a full-blown, broken-hearted, getting his pain out by inflicting pain on other kids type of adult person, you know. You know well, if you ask his daughter, Trixie, my <laughs> character, he's an asshole. <laughs> and, and so many RPGs embrace lo you know, the, the Norse gods, which is great. Like, even if you look at Palladium books... They have the, for Rifts, and, and basically any of the, the RPGs they've got, they've got the Norse Pantheon written out. And one of the best jokes I loved in the writing in there is they say his best trick of all is he convinced the comic book company to give Thor long flowing blonde locks. <laughs> Which he didn't have. <laughs> Which, of course, if you're a traditionalist, he's always Thor is always described as this rough, tumbled redhead with a big, burly man beard and big, burly features. Not Thor from Marvel Universe. He's got very fair features with long, flowing Sith-like locks. And Sith, who in I mean, there's there's myths about how her golden locks mm -hmm. were cut off by Loki, and then she had to get the dwarves, she, the, the, the dwarves made like a spun gold uh -huh. replacement for her, and in the comic book, she's a brunette. <laughs> yeah. So... I mean, Sif of the golden hair is a brunette. I, I mean, if it helps in the comic book, the, at one rendition of it, they did write in that when her hair was cut, and you could totally see the folks from... Uh, Tangled took this one. Once her golden, magically beautiful hair was cut, it grew back black. Ah, uh, okay. So, so just like in Tangled, when Rapunzel's hair is cut, it, it no longer is magical and gold. Yeah. It's back as black. So there is that caveat that they've used. But Loki is such a fun character that even if you don't use Loki per se, like if you're doing a D&D &D where you have the god of masks, 
Loki is a great NPC archetype to use because if you look at the old Norse stories, like in the earlier ones when Odin and Loki are blood brothers in the old stories, he's this young, mischievous puck like character. You know, he's he's very, you know, he's not as strong and aggressive as the rest of them, so he uses his wits, which Odin is a trickster god as well. And, you know, Odin appreciated the wit that Loki had and, and the wiry wiles that he could use. I mean, and that's one reason why Loki's character continues on in all the ancient stories is because even though he screwed up, he made amends somehow. Which is always a great, you know, archetype for your players of even though they screw up, because of dice rolls probably, you can always tr try a trickery like Odysseus was another great one at it that uses trickery to make amends, you know. Come on, you know, we know there are some Loki stories I'm thinking channel in the, in the Odyssey when they go to the Cyclops and they say, what's your name? Nobody. Mm -hmm. My name is Nobody. You know, so trickster trickster NPCs are great because not only can they help the players, like Mem Darwin was helping our dear rogue there try to beat an NPC that was eight levels higher than she was and known for killing people with his cheap spike chain by saying, why don't you drug him? If you drug him, coup de gras comes easily. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't hurt that he wanted to get rid of that guy too. So it is okay to have NPCs out there that their goal aligns with your players, which makes it easier to play the NPC because it's like, well, here I am, this old woman who wants to help you when in fact I'm the hag in the woods that you'll later on have to deal with. But right now we want to get rid of the same guy, you know. So this noble who's a bad guy who's against the players happens to also be financing loggers aiming towards her woods. Later on, you'll see the hag again, but you know, and now it becomes a great recurring NPC. Mm -hmm. And that that's a great way to get your players buy-in is by having notable NPCs that the Volvar witches. Oh, the Volvar from witches from the same one. Ah, oh, that was great. We had a we had some uh, sister frost giants who were a oppressed by the boys' club of the frost giants, which I totally threw that out there because when two fifths of the uh, three fifths of the group are females, you totally should embrace the hey fellow sisters, the misters of being jerks. So the Volva witches and the Volva witches liked Trixie's style. Because mm -hmm. they were mercenaries working for the highest bidder, but when they saw this scion trick them, they're just like, ah, we like you. You're a woman in a male scion-dominated world, and you used your wit to trick us. Mm -hmm. We respect the the player for the game. <laughs> yeah, and then they're like, oh, let's corrupt her. <laughs> <laughs> And then they could say other things like, you know, hey, dearie, when you come for tea at the auction later on, oh. don't win the bid. Yeah. So, yeah. And that, of course, brings us back to Loki. One of my scions <laughs> is broken by him. And, you know, his daughter, I mean, she is, she's pretty much, you know, that campaign kind of broke her. <laughs> well, that wasn't Loki's fault. He gave you a briefcase full of money, oh. which is always a good dad, and yeah. said, here's a vacation for all of your friends, which is also a great dad. And then he said, I want you to go to the auction and win the item, but don't win the item. Yeah, which, okay. Uh, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? You know, this Beggy McBeggerson uh, spiel, you know, plus, so this, as a result, between all the different tasks that dear old dad gave me that I apparently completely failed at, now she fully believes that Ragnarok is entirely her fault. <laughs> but the thing is, did she fail? Because she did everything asked of her. She succeeded. 
it just happened before you got there, the Volva Witches, to go back to notable NPCs, cast the spell to summon the giant's hammer, Thimble Winter, to whoever gets the item. Yeah, and also at the same time, the dwarf betrayed me. Well, see, that guy was a dick, and his head was literally on the line that if he did not come back with it, his head would be separated from his yeah. shoulders. Yeah, so you combine all of this, and you get – she started drinking. That character specifically never drank alcohol because it dulled the reflexes. It made you slow. It, it made you less – you know, she started drinking. This <laughs> from the trickster who, when the poor dwarf was trying to win the bid and couldn't go there, had to build a Sheldon bot with the – iPad, and you remote interface to make him lose the bid. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> and how many people told Trixie not to get the item? But Dad also said to get the item. He said to win the bid, but don't get the item. <laughs> well, I had to win the bid. <laughs> well, that and NPC wise, Loki wanted you to be a great distraction so he could rip off all the other people there with the items they had in their rooms because they're all yeah, busy at there the was, auction. There was that was quite the you know. And he wanted you to drive the price up so if anyone did win it, they were paying a king's ransom for it just to screw him over. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then you won the bid. So. Yeah, and then I won the bit. <laughs> but because the dwarf betrayed me, he the took the item, and yeah, I thought that was a pretty I wear interesting that backup plan because you I asked wear that him belly to build chain it. as a reminder never to trust anyone, never to get played again. And if you're wanting to know the insane story we're talking about, just go over to Scion Ragnarok and roll a here to Scion. Something something podcast and <laughs> listen to the old season on that one because yeah that was the the trip down the the Viking cruise line that Loki left yeah. for Carrie's character's wedding present yeah <laughs> Loki wedding was present. pretty damn active of course Loki is in every story pretty damn active whereas most of the gods are like here's a job very straightforward Loki's like either way. You're going to be really useful, whether you do what I tell you to do or do what I tell you not to do. Yeah. And this is why in many of the stories, okay. Loki is a hero or a heel or a straight I know. Head. When my other character has a – well, it's a complicated relationship, but not quite the same way. Mm. You know, they actually get along really well together <laughs> a little too well um uh <laughs> but uh uh then my other one oh she's so pissed <laughs> and then to think in another campaign loki is your boyfriend and your baby daddy <laughs> my baby daddy and and your baby, baby daddy one. don't I uh, know. don't wait in line because he has many babies to worry about <laughs> Yeah, like Val would wait on him. Ah! <laughs> Not. <laughs> See, that's why Loki is totally my pick, because in many games, he has been pivotal on having interesting things happen. <laughs> well, he's a master manipulator. But yep. I think we have gone well beyond the purview of the uh, challenge for today. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and say that's a good place to wrap it up before I get chained up in a cave with serpents hanging over me, spilling venom into my face. <laughs> See, yeah. One more Loki reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you for listening, and I hope you're almost ready for the weekend because it's almost here. It's weekend adjacent day. Woo! Thank you for listening, guys. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. 
If you enjoyed our show, please check out D&D Journey of the 5th Edition and Ragnarok and roll a Scion Hero to Ragnarok Story. Also, check out our Patreon page for more content and behind-the-scenes things, as well as joining us for a one-shot game or two.